we have with us today uh, Professor Robert Tushima, who is the Associate Professor and Chair of the Department of Biology. Um, we really, really are so thankful that he is initiating the first of the faculty series that we are launching at University Connection and with a topic which I think is becoming more and more relevant in today's time, careers related to biology and an introduction to the same. I'd just like to formally introduce Dr. Tushima. Dr. Tushima holds a BSc in Physiology and Pharmacology and a PhD in Pharmacology from Western University, London, Canada. After completing his PhD, Dr. Tushima did postdoctoral research at Northwestern University in Chicago and the Toronto General Hospital. In 1998, he was appointed as an assistant professor in the Department of Medicine at the University of Toronto and received a new investigator award from the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario. Robert moved to York University in 2007 and held a career investigator award from the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Ontario. From 2012 to 15, he was the Associate Dean Research and Partnerships and since 2017, Dr. Tushima has been the chair of the Department of Biology at York University. His current research explores the fundamental electrical and mechanical properties of the heart and how the heart responds to stress. Oh my God, we really need to know that, all of us. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, the floor is all yours, uh, Professor Tushima. And uh, thank you. Thank you once again for being with us today. Over to you. So welcome everyone. I'm glad to be this, the first speaker in this, I hope, very exciting series of talks between University Connection and New York University. Again, I am Robert Tushima. I'm the chair of the Department of Biology. And this is a little image of our university right now. It's always blue and sunny in Toronto. But since we are remote and connected through the internet, and I haven't had the pleasure of being, this is where I'm from. I'm from York University, and this is Toronto. And sorry, let me just show you. This is where York University is. In, and this, just so those who may not be familiar with Toronto or with Canada, most of the Canadians live in the southern part of the country. If you've ever been to Canada, you know where it is. This is where New York City. So it's relatively nice in Toronto in terms of weather. Hot down here, cold down here, very nice down here. And this is York University, not today, but maybe people in, in India, many people in, around the world think Canada is just covered in snow. But in fact, it's quite nice. We're going into our autumn season. So this is again, the main building at York University. This is the, my building where I work. And in the next few weeks, you'll see these beautiful colors as the leaves change from green to these bright red, orange, and yellow. And this is our engineering, new engineering building. So it's a relatively new campus. We're only about 60 years old. And today I'll be talking about the Department of Biology. It's going to be an overview of what we offer, but also I know as students, you're interested in knowing careers. What can I do with a degree from York University in biology? So the BART department is broken up in two main sections. We do research, anything from small molecules to the large ecosystems around the world. And we do a lot of teaching. So the students are involved in teaching and learning, where we have very clear evidence-based teaching practices, effective learning strategies, and our lectures, you're taught by a number of award-winning professors. And this is our current cohort of professors in the Department of Biology. So in terms of, I'll give you an overview of some of the degrees we offer at York University in the Department of Biology. The largest is the Bachelor of Science degree in biology. This is a quite flexible program, I believe, for students because you are able, as a student, to take a large range of courses from molecular biology 
to ecology, so learning about the whole ecosystem of this planet. And you can learn about quite a number of different topics, such as physiology, cell biology, molecular biology, genetics, and ecology and evolution. So basically, if you look at life science from very small molecules to the cell, to large organisms, population, and the planet, this is what biology teaches, all of this and more, everything. So you get a very broad area of knowledge in terms of the different topics you get to study and learn about. We also have a Bachelor of Science program in biochemistry, similar to biology, but it takes more focus on chemistry in the life science. So it combines biology with molecular and submolecular levels and more of the chemical processes that are involved in living organisms. For this is a quite a popular stream. It's, we, it's not a specific program. It's a stream within the, the biology program. It's the biomedical stream. And it provides a very comprehensive curriculum for students who are very interested in the healthcare professions, such as medicine, dentistry, veterinary medicine, optometry, pharmacy, but also in biomedical research. So this is quite popular with our students. We also have a Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology. And in this program, it uses and focuses on living organisms, but in terms of how to create new products for human health, but also for food sciences and the environment. So it bridges for sort of the biotech, tech knowledge with life sciences. So again, you take courses in molecular and cell biology, genetic chemistry, but also business type courses like economics and ethics. So it's a, quite a different, more diverse program in our, pro, uh, in our department. So this is something that I know students were interested what can they do with a degree in biology? So there's many things that students can pursue. You can work in hospital or diagnostic labs as technologists. You can go into the biotech or pharmaceutical industry, marketing and sales. You have the knowledge in science in biology and use that for marketing and sales in the pharma pharmaceutical or biotech industry. Number of students go into the education field, both in elementary and high school, so such as being teachers, like your teachers you have today at your school, and also the, our colleges. You can do work in the health sciences, such as clinical research, biomedical research, diagnostics, or even pursue further education in professional programs. So biology degree can lead you to pursue medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and even programs such as law and business. And a number of students pursue graduate work to do a master's or a PhD in, in terms of to get more education and more training. We also have environmental biology, and this is quite important because we know what's happening to our planet due to climate change, plastics and pollution in our waters and on our land. So we have a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Biology as well as a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science. And these programs focus on the biological, chemical, physical, and global components of environmental science. So you can explore areas of population and community ecology, biodiversity, conservation biology. But more recently, with the advent of new technologies in the sciences, we have ecology professors who now use molecular and genetic approaches to study their and do do research in aspects of population and in community organisms. So we have molecular evolutionary biologists, genomic ecologists, climate change biologists. So Professor Sapna Sharma is a world leader in the effects of climate change on freshwater systems. Professor 
Elizabeth Clare, who recently joined us from the UK, studies biodiversity and her model organism is the bat. She has developed a technology to measure DNA in air, which is, was quite difficult and some thought impossible. And Professor Amr Zayed and Professor Sandra Rehan are bee biologists and use genetic approaches to look at wild populations and the impact of climate change and pesticides on bee populations. You'll also learn at York outside the classroom. So not everything is inside a building. You work can learn in the field. So we offer a number of field courses. So what are field courses? You, exactly what they sound like. You are outside working in the field. Most of them are in Toronto. Oops, pardon me. They are in, in the Toronto area, but we also have programs through the Ontario University's program in field biology, opportunities for students to go in different parts of the world. So here, here you're studying and learning, but you're collecting and sample in the field to analyze and to do reports. So it's not traditional and you get to go outside, mostly in the summer when it's nice, but we do have some winter field courses and learn. So in environmental biology, it opens the door for other careers, such as working for our conservation authority around Toronto, because we have a number of parks and wild spaces that we are protected from development. You can be an environmental scientist, an environmental lawyer, environmental consultant, or make policy or science. So you provide information to government or businesses. You can work for organizations at the national, international level for that study conservation of the planet, of the region, of water or land. You can work for non-governmental organizations. You can work for the private sector. And you can be a planner for cities. Anytime a building maybe has to be built, a large highway infrastructure, they need environmental planners. And this is critical before anything can start. So environmental pro biology and environmental science programs open the door for other possibilities that students may, as like yourself might not be aware of. At York, one great thing we can do is provide our students opportunity to do research, hands-on practical research outside the classroom. So we have a number of programs offered at York University and within the Department of Biology. One is the Ray program. Research at York. This program provides opportunity for students to work with a professor in their lab. We have a number of prestigious summer awards. The Nash Natural Sciences Engineering Research Council of Canada Undergraduate Student Research Award provides students opportunity, opportunities in the summer to do research in a professor's lab during the, um, and this is complemented by the Dean's Undergraduate Research Award offered within the Faculty of Science. These are highly competitive, highly prestigious awards that provide students this type of research, working in the lab. These are actually my students working and doing real, real science, real research. As you can see, we also have a practicum course. And this is very, this is a non-credit course Students do not pay a tuition fee, but it gives them experience up to 10 hours a week. So it's more of a volunteer type, but again, it gives them experience. In your last year of study, students have the opportunity to take an honors thesis research course where they do a research project, again, with a professor in their lab. And there it's for credit that students get, again, more research experience. So we get a number of opportunities pardon me, through to our students to gain real life experience in a real lab. Something new in the Faculty of Science is an internship program. And this again gives our full-time students the opportunity to gain practical experience, but this time working in with the biotech industry, pharmaceutical industry. So we have a number of programs offer for students in these programs, including biology, biochemistry, 
biomedical sciences, as well as the other programs in the faculty of science. So it's not just restricted to biology students. And again, this could be for a four month or eight month period. Again, it allows you to get real hands-on practical experience working in industry outside the university. When students come to York, they could be lost because there's a large university with over 50,000 students. But we have a lot of student organization and clubs. One of them, the York University Biology Society, focuses on students in biology. So it's a way to kind of bring students together. And if you come to York, being an international student, you probably feel lost because you're in a new country, don't know a lot of people. This is a great opportunity to meet other students who have similar interests in biology and pro provide a network, an area for students to meet and provide opportunities for different uh, activities and social events. So always think about getting involved in clubs because this is a great way to find and meet new friends. So one student, I was given some questions and one student asked, you know, what programs or do, do I need a biology say for psychology? Well, these are the programs at York University where you would need to take at least a first year biology course. And you can see they're all the biology programs, but we also have biophysics, which is offered through our physics department and mathematical, mathematical biology program offered by Department of Mathematics and Statistics. So it bridges, in this case, physics and biology, or uh, biology and mathematics. Also in the faculty of health, we have kinesiology, which is physical education, and psychology. So not just biology is required for just strictly biology, you'll need it for potentially possibly other courses or programs that you may be interested in pursuing. One student asked, do I need math? So I guess they're not really interested in math or math is not my strongest. So which programs in the life science require math? All of them. So unfortunately, it's the same courses, same programs that if you're interested in the life sciences, if you want to take them, you will be required to take math. It's important, the fundamental science course and that you need so and this is not unique just to York biology it's common at other Canadian universities so you cannot escape math unfortunately so the other question a student asked is what skills does York biology offer and so beyond just learning biology or biochemistry or biomedical sciences or environmental science so there are hard skills and soft skills. So what are hard skills? Hard skills are data analysis. You will have courses where you have to analyze data, analyze your own experiment that you performed in the course. Software knowledge, using a computer. We all use computers, but you'll maybe need to know how to use specific software or computer program to analyze your data. So with this, you gain expertise in scientific reasoning, scientific writing. So writing and communication are important in terms of writing a lab report or a dissertation, if you take a thesis course. And unfortunately, here it comes again, you'll need to know math. So what are soft skills? So soft skills are these communication, being able to communicate with other people, either verbally, like I'm doing now, or in writing. Working with a team, that's very important. You're not going to be just working alone all the time. There might be times where you have to work with other students in a lab course or on a project. And this is important, how to work as a team rather than as an individual. And through working as a team, you have to do problem solving, using your knowledge, and skill set to critically analyze and come up with solutions and be creative at the same time. There's not always one solution to a problem. There might be multiple ways. So being creative and being adaptable, adapting to different changes. We're adapting right now because of, unfortunately with this pandemic, 
but we're succeeding and surviving. So that's, that's good. So here's the you know, result. So for Google, we all know Google, having expertise in STEM, science, tech, engineering, and math was at the bottom. So to work for a STEM or tech company like Google, you didn't really need this kind of knowledge. These were the more important skills. Being a good coach, leadership, leading a team, being part of a team, uh, respecting other and empowering people in your team. So possessing insight into others. So when you work as a team, it's not just you, it's everyone in your group. Empathy towards your col colleagues. So knowing and knowing how they feel, being empathetic, being again, communication, good communicator and listening to other people. It's not just one person talking. You have to give people the opportunity to talk and listen to their ideas. Being a critical thinker and problem solver, making correction, connection, sorry, across complex ideas. So knowing just, you know, need to know more than just your specific area. So having a broader knowledge allows you to make better insights and solutions into problems. So this is important. And so the soft skills that you will learn in the biology program at York provide you with these types of skills to move forward whenever, whenever or whatever career choice you make. Now, where do our students go? So here are some of our recent graduates. Tim here is a lecturer at our local Georgian college. Joitsna works with an education science company, Top Hat. They make curriculum for university programs. Alex is a researcher at the University of Alberta, which is in the Western part of Canada. Sarah works with a bars, bars room medicine is a, and is a corporate manager there. Thomas here works at our Canadian Museum of Nature. He did study bee population. And Yuk Ho also stayed on doing research. So there's different opportunities, not only in research, but in education, tech industry, where students can go on after they graduate. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to my talk. I hope you found it informative. And I'd be very happy to answer any questions you have. Well, I have a question for you, Professor Robert. Um, this is more around, uh, let's say, biology and careers related to biology. And especially after the pandemic, I think a lot of students have been asking questions around virology and pandemic studies. Uh, is that mm -hmm. something of a transition that can be made from a life sciences major? And how does one go about pursuing pandemic studies or virology like fields? Your thoughts? So we have a professor who studies viruses he's a virologist we have an immunology professor so because yes with the pandemic it's been very upfront and center also what's very good is york university has a very strong relationship with sanofi pasteur sanofi is one of the leading vaccine producers in the world and it's very fortunate that their facility is a few kilometers away from the main university so the internship program I talked about, a lot of students get receive uh, opportunities to do an internship with Sanofi, with a vaccine company. So there's that opportunity. So students, as they're studying at York, get an opportunity to work with a ph pharmaceutical company who develops vaccines. We have now, this might be unusual for students, we have two professors in mathematics who study disease modeling. Well, there's a whole center for disease modeling and two of them focus on infectious diseases. One was focused primarily on influenza because in Canada we have in the winter season, many students, I mean, many people with influenza virus uh, disease. The other professor starts, has been studying SARS, but the first SARS that happened in 2004, but since 
of course, the pandemic started, her research has really escalated. And what they do is they take public health data to model how infection spreads, are vaccines reliable? So, you know, students may hear and pe people in the public, oh, the model predicts there's gonna be a sharp rise in cases. Well, where did they get that information from? It's mathematical modeling. So again, you can't escape math, sorry. And uh, so you take the data and you make predictions. You try to make sound prediction. No one knows what's gonna happen, but you know, if we don't socially distance, if we don't wear masks, what will happen to the number of cases in the city? What is the benefit of the vaccine? So this is kind of types of careers students can lead to based on the type of studies courses they take. 